So imagine I've got a bunch of apps installed on my phone. Of course, I can set up live tiles. But if I'm installing 30, 40, 50 apps, um, I'm going to be more likely to use the app list over here. And there are a few things that we're doing to make it easier for end users to get to your apps if the list is really long. We automatically detect a long list now. And you see here the letters present in the list, just like we have in contacts. We've implemented a jump list for apps. So if you want to get to Twitter, you touch A, you touch T, boom, there's Twitter. You can launch it. It's super fast and easy. I've been using this on my phone. It's surprising how addictive it is to jump over there, hit a letter, launch an app. So, small thing, nice enhancement, something we've heard feedback on we tried to improve. I'll give you another example along the same lines. You might notice right there there's a little search button. I can now touch that and do text typing to search my giant list of installed apps. So let's say I want to launch my Amazon app. I can type AM, boom, it's filtered right away to Amazon, and I can launch the app. But even better, potentially, uh, from your perspective, um, right there in the same list is a link that will help me as an end user find something on the marketplace. So I want to transition over and talk about how we're improving the marketplace for end users to get to your apps. I'm just going to touch search marketplace there, assuming our connectivity is working on stage. In a minute you'll see some of the things we're doing to make the marketplace better. Um, right away you might notice a few things that are going to be a great enhancement for end users and help them find your app. Apps. I've, I've done a search here, and the first thing you see is it's filtered just by apps, better than when we shipped Windows Phone 7. And there's a lot more metadata shown here. The publisher is shown, the price is shown, the rating is shown. Um, and this list is provided by top downloads or, or popularity of apps, so users can find the apps they want. If what I was really looking for was music, then I can pivot over and see the music kept separately from the apps. Um, if I wanted to find a podcast, we're going to have support for podcasts on the device in the marketplace in the U.S. this fall. I can see all the podcasts that relate to Amazon and so on. So it's a lot quicker and easier for users to find the stuff they're looking for. And even beyond that, we've tried to improve the way people look at apps before they buy them and the buying process. So here I've opened up Amazon Kindle, which is out there in the marketplace, and we've made this a little bit easier for people to navigate through. I can look at reviews in a full screen pivot, I can pivot again and see screenshots a little bit better and easier to navigate, and in the, in the spirit of trying to help users find, discover, and install more apps, we're dedicating a whole pivot right there next to the details, giving rich information about related apps that you might want to get if you like this one. Um, so the, those are some of the things we've done there. I'm going to click to install this. We've streamlined this process. For free apps, you confirm one time. We automatically navigate over to the app list or the games hub where the app's going to be installed. And you see right there uh, the Amazon Kindle app. As soon as I get network connectivity, is going to start installing. There's a little progress bar. When it's done, the tile will light up and the app is installed. So we've really tried to make this process easier for the user from the launching of apps to searching for apps to finding them on the marketplace and getting related app suggestions to simplification in buying and installing. Um, now, I want to I want to also broaden this and talk to you about something that, that we've done that's a little bit different, and in particular is a new feature I'm really excited to show you for the first time here. Um, as you know, one of the ideas behind Windows Phone 7 was to introduce hubs where a user could go to one place and see all of the stuff related to photos or all of the stuff related to games or all of the stuff related to people or music. And just as a refresher course, I'm going to go into the music and video hub here where you see there's my music collection that I might have synced with my PC. If I pan over, there's my history. These are This is music or video I've been playing. Whether it's coming from our built-in experiences or your apps, you get to integrate with the hub there in history, and also new, whether it's our stuff or your apps. Over here on the right, and we have this today, but we've improved it a little bit in the Mango update. There's a place for third-party apps to appear. So if a user goes to music and videos, and they're really using, let's say, Last.fm or Slacker, those apps are present, taking over the hub, and it's one place that the user can do go to do all those things with apps. This helps users find apps more easily than navigating through screens and screens of icons. That was a, a sort of thematic idea for us. And what I want to do now is show you a brand new feature in the Mango update that is the same basic idea, but gives access to your apps when users do searches. So what I'm going to do actually is use our built-in multitasking UI here and pan over. We, we pre-set up a search over here. Um, I did a search, <coughs> excuse me, 
I did a search using the search button, typed movies, and got a search result. Um, so here I have my web search results, my local search, and so on. And as you see in Windows Phone 7, we give a, a Bing instant answer here when I do a search for things like movies that tells me movies near Las Vegas, Nevada. I can touch that, and this is a, a movie experience, assuming we have connectivity, coming from the Bing service that will show all the movies that are here locally. Let me try this again. I'm going to plug in my USB cable here and see if I can get network connectivity that way. In fact, I'm going to do this search again. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, so uh, I've done a search for movies. I touch the instant answer. I get a list of movies that are playing now. We'll choose source code that seems sort of thematically appropriate. And in the Mango release now, as you saw in Windows Phone 7, when you do a search and you find restaurants, we have a restaurant card or a place card that gives you interesting details about a place. And we hang functionality off that. Well, here's a movie card for the movie source code. I could pan to the right and see showtimes. Or if I pan to the left, all of these cards, which come with search results, places, movies, and so on, now have a pivot for extras. Just like in the hubs, this is a place where we're going to connect user actions on the phone with your apps. Now think about the scenario. I'm out in the town, I use my cool voice search, I say, movies! It gives me a list of movies. I find a movie I'm interested in, source code. Now I want to watch a trailer, or see what the critics are saying, or learn about the cast. Well, IMDB would be a perfect app to give me interesting information. Rather than leaving my search task, going back to screens full of icons to find the IMDB, DB app, then launch it, then navigate all the way through the IMDB app, I can just, from the movie source code, launch IMDB as an extra, and using a deep link, IMDB jumps right to the relevant content for me, so I can scroll down and see what the critics are saying, I can watch a trailer, I can pan over and see the cast, and so on. We think that this idea is going to help users get more value out of your apps, enjoy their, their app and phone experience a lot better, and keep improving the phone in a way that delivers on that whole glance and go idea of getting you in and out and getting your tasks done more quickly. So we're pretty excited about this new concept, search extras and helping users get value out of searches and your apps. This is a website. I'm looking at IE9 on the phone. Uh, we've moved the address bar down here to the bottom so we can dedicate a huge amount of screen real estate to your content. Um, the first website I'm showing is a sample HTML5 audio website. So imagine I'm browsing on the web, I'm looking at an audio service. Um, I can move over here and I'll touch the play button. And hopefully you can hear this, we have a little mic on stage. I'm now playing audio. I can press the skip forward and play different audio. All of this with standards-based HTML tags. If I press the start button and navigate out of the browser, just as we now will support background audio for native apps, we support background audio for HTML5 coming from the browser. Oh, thank you, glad you like it. Glad you like that feature. Um, also, if I'm on the start menu, I can use the phone's volume controls to pause the HTML audio. So that's the first example. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over. I'll show you. Here's the tab UI. Um, I want to switch over to a real-world website. This is not a sample that we put together or built up or anything. This is Boston.com, the website of the Boston Globe. And what the folks at Boston.com are doing is using HTML5's video tag to have standards-based support for video on their website. And on our phones, that's great because it lets a user go straight to the Boston website. Uh, I can navigate over here, press play on the video, and you see H.264 video natively supported on the phone. It's quick to load. It streams very nicely. Uh, we'll get to actual quality here. You see the quality of the video looks great. We provide a full screen viewer with user controls right there for pause and resume. And if I go back, of course, I'll go right back to the website. Also, actually, while I'm here, it's worth mentioning, I've seen people posting on blogs uh, with IE today on Windows Phone. Some people are disappointed that in landscape mode, you don't get the address bar there on the bottom. Well, you can see here in IE9 on uh, Mango, we fixed that. When I go back to portrait, uh, it rotates around and moves back to the bottom. So uh, that new design helps to make the landscape and portrait experiences a little bit more consistent. Okay, one more demo. Uh, 
now I'm going to switch over to favorites. I'm going to move this USB cable out of the way. Hopefully I keep my connectivity. And I want to show you an example of the performance benefit that some uh, HTML5 sites are going to get um, with uh, the hardware acceleration that's built in. So let me bring some friends on stage here alongside our Windows phone. Um, I've got an iPhone 4 and uh, Nexus S and uh, Windows Phone 7 running IE9. Remember, same IE9 core browsing engine with hardware acceleration onto the phone. So what we're going to do is we're going to load an HTML5 speed reading demo on all three of the phones. So let me try to get these ready. 